Right, we're back YouTube. Right, the fire's going nice. So today we are going to be cooking sweet and sour pork with vegetables. Outdoor living. You can't beat it, honestly. Right, equipment. Saucepan. Chopping board. Knife in sheath. Plastic containers. I've got four. I bet I use them, but you know they're there. Uh, tin opener. Because not all tins come with the clicky can thingy. And a frying pan. Now, I've got a wooden spatula and a lid. <coughs> lid keeps the heat in. It's all good. Right. Okay. Right, we'll start with uh, the basics. One onion, some stem ginger, some garlic, sweet corn, brown sugar, uh, and what else was it? Cooking oil. Right, first, peel the onion. Now, there's a lot of people out there that know how to peel an onion, but I'm gonna teach you anyway. Well, as soon as we're outside, all, all natural ingredients, like, I mean, natural peel, I leave on the ground. You know, giving something back to Mother Nature. Right, I always start at the top, leave the root till last. So I'll take the top off. Find yourself a nice little bit of peel. And just peel the onion. Straight forward. It's dead easy. Don't take too much of the flesh off because uh, it's just waste, isn't it? You know? You only want to take the skin off. Right. One peeled onion. They say, you know I mean, you know, they say you got to leave the root on. You know, I'd, I'd just take it off. It's time to do it crying and I'm crying like a girl. So be it. Right. Now we're only slicing this. Right, so. clear space on the board and put the onion in a plastic container. Alright, all rubbish goes in the bin. I'll do that in a second. Alright, next, your garlic. That's a bulb. That individual piece is a clove. So I'm going to use half a bulb of garlic because I like my garlic, it keeps the vampires away. And there's enough of them. Right, so get your garlic, start at the root of the clove like this. Just peel. Dead simple. Some people boil it in water first to soften the skins. But why? It's just a waste of energy, burning gas for no reason. Don't see the point in it and then just squash it with a knife, like so. Repeat this until all the garlic is peeled. And you can use as much garlic as you like, it's up to you. Like I say, I like my garlic, it gives up a wonderful flavour once it's cooked. Some people don't like it, some people swallow a whole clove for breakfast. I only ever take the roots off if they're really big. Otherwise, it's up to you. Some people chop it with salt and all these different techniques for preparing garlic. Me, I just crush it, roughly chop it, and that's good enough for me.
you can see the fire, it's just nice amber, slow burn. You've got controlled heat. I don't want to be burning the bottom of your pan. Right, that's my garlic peel. Just crush it with the back of the blade. So, those who are not confident with knives, I mean, you do, you can get garlic crushes and all that, you know, I mean, you can get dried garlic, which works just fine, but you got to realise it's mixed with salt. So you're getting, you know, already garlic that's mixed with salt. So you just got to watch your seasoning. You know, if you're seasoning a, a dish later, you don't need as much salt garlic granules or the dried garlic in the little tubs it's already got salt in it sometimes a little bit too much for me right okay now this is all going in the frying pan at the same time so i'm going to put all in the same container use the back of the knife to scrape it in the container ginger also going in i'll take a lump like this Most people have got a vegetable peeler. I just prefer to use a knife. Cut it into a nice square sort of log sort of shape. Trim off any excess peel. Cut it into batons, strips, whatever you want to do. And then just, again, just roughly chop it. And that's it. little squares like so that's going in the pan at the same time as the garlic and the onion so it all goes in there I'm also putting sweet corn all the pill give it back to nature it's the way I see it came from nature so what's the harm in giving it back unless you're in some rich person's back garden and they don't like it but you know we're not right tin opener I think you all know how to use one of these Pretty straightforward. Right, I'll get my can light so tip it up. Shake all the juice up. Right, that's it. First stage of the sauce. Right, clean pan. Already cleaned it earlier. Get that on the heat. Get a little bit of oil in there. This is just vegetable oil. Some people prefer sunflower, some people prefer olive. It's just to me, cost of living, the cheapest. Well, just a splash of oil. We're ready to go. It's first first part of the sauce. Right. Don't give any synthetics back to nature. They don't like it. You know, like all your garlic pills, your onion pills. After a big shower, or rain, it will just dissolve away. A plastic metal don't do it it's bad so my onion skin bag thing in the bin right our fire's dying down a little bit so one bit of wood this sort of size it's enough to keep it going and that's it. Right, we're on a relatively flat surface, yeah? Remember, if you're cooking, we're on a flat surface. Don't go sitting outside WH Smith in the high street and lighting one of these. They're not going to like it. But, that's pretty flat. I'm good with it. I'm, I'm good with it. So, wait for the oil to heat up a little bit. Well, you can put a lid on. Heat it up. It'll heat quicker, but it's not necessary. Don't walk away from a fire or a pan with oil in. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. So if the phone rings, it's up. You know, who's more important? The person on the other end 
your house or your garden or whatever burning down. Oh, yeah, you're not going to like one leaving your house, but do you know what I mean? It's like just a little bit. Don't turn your back on a fire or a pan with hot oil in it. Right, it's all going in. Keep that container. I'll wash it up later. Right, so we've got the garlic, the ginger, and the onion in. And then I'm going to put the sweet corn in as well. The tin goes in the rubbish. Stir around, make sure it's all evenly spread on the bottom of the pan. Right at this point, get your salt. Now, with these, I always pour it in at my hand first. Reason being, I've seen the top come off of this, go into a saucepan full of soup, waste it. Couldn't, it was undigestible, you, you, you know, you couldn't eat it. So, we put just a little like a dessert spoonful of salt in at the moment. Next we've got brown sugar. This is gonna give the sweet and sour like sauce. Just an extra bit of sweetness. It's wonderful stuff. This is just demerara sugar. Use all different sugars. Right again, pour into your hand. You want about about golf balls worth of size, you know. Bang that in there. Two of them. It's sweet and sour, remember. So, sugar. We'll season again later with sugar in case we uh, are lacking a bit on the sweet side. Right. Next. Pickled onions. These are just El Cheapos from a famous supermarket. I don't see the point in spending out thousands on pickled onions. They're onions and they're pickled. It's that simple. 30 pence that was. Bargain. Lid pops off. Drain a bit of the vinegar away. Anyway. Right. Oh, chop a few of these up. I go over like about half a can, half, half a gel. I'm gonna pick all these out. I'm gonna pick all these out. Get it? Tough one. Pick these out. Yeah, go over about a dozen, I reckon. Just so it's clean and dry. Twelve. So a dozen pickled onions. Just that slight. Don't need these massive things. Right, just cut them into quarters, in half, and then in half again. Don't have to worry about taking the top and tail off these. It's already pickled, it's already softened. There's no caterpillars crawling in it. Pickled onions, done. Get them straight in with the sweet corn, the ginger, and the onion, the garlic. Like you see, they think, oh, there's a lot of onion in that. It's not. The pickled onion goes with the sour taste. So you've got sugar in there, and then this is adding to the sour taste. Some people use tin pineapple. I think it's just too sweet. You know, there's other ways of making a sweet and sour. Sugar and pickled onion, you've got your sweet and your sour. All in one. Right, that's all good. Give it a bit of a stir. I'll have to crank the heat up in a minute. If you're outdoors cooking, try not to get any sugar on the top because it'll attract insects because of the sweet smell. You'll have bees flying around and flies and all sorts, you know. It's not good. So we're going to bang the lid on that for a minute. 
let it heat up, stick another bit of wood on. And uh, that's all good, that'll heat up nicely. Okay, the sweet corn, pickled onion, onion, garlic and ginger is wilted really nicely, it's sweated off as they say in the profession and uh, we're just going to top up the seasoning. We're going to add a little bit more salt, some black pepper and some demerara sugar. Black pepper. Couple of twists of black pepper. Again, about a teaspoons worth of salt. The demerara sugar. Again, tip it in the hand first. Don't overdo what you're putting into the pan. Make sure you've got clean hands, obviously, like I always have. Two more of those. I'll give that a stir in until the sugar's more or less dissolved. And that's that done. We move on to the second stage then. cooking time on a wood burning stove for this I mean it's taken about 15 minutes to get the to get to this stage and that's been about four pieces of wood about sort of oh wait, about that sort of size I don't recommend putting your face in the fire either but we made a Kevlar sometimes you know Good way to have a shave. Right, there you go. That's more or less ready. I've tasted it already. But you want to keep a spoon, one of these, handy. Very sweet, very sour. The pickled onion and the vinegar against the sugar and the sweet corn with the ginger, spot on. Absolutely wonderful. Now, when you get to this stage, you can add extra vinegar or extra sugar, depends on your taste. I mean, that's fine for me. I'm cheating because I've got a tin of sweet and sour sauce to add to this. Well, that's going in like a last thing. Right, so, that's about ready. Let's crack on with the next stage. No, that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that, but more or less there. You don't want to overcook it, it's got sugar in it. And sugar's gonna burn. Once you've got burnt sugar in there, very hard to get rid of that taste. Very hard. Better off just starting again. So there you go, that's what it looks like. Right. Leave that on there just for two more minutes while I get prepared for the next stage. Which is I've got diced pork already in a packet. It's simple, it's cheap, it's cost effective one that and there were some Lincolnshire sausages on special offer. Wow. I mean, they're on a the reduced shelf. Right, so for the second stage we've got diced pork, Lincolnshire sausages, mushrooms. 
red, yellow, green pepper. I'm putting in green beans just because I like to bounce it out with some vegetables, healthy. I've also got a head of reduced broccoli. Looks like it's been used as a football, but it'll do, we'll, we'll go through it. Uh, we've got apple juice that's going to go in there. We've got tomato puree that's going to go in there. Um, and the pièce de résistance, I don't know what's in that, but there's no palm oil in it, and that's what matters. So, let's get this prepared. Right, this is done. Wonderful. We got this is the base for our sweet and sour. We've got the sugar, we've got the vinegar from the pickled onion. It's there. Right. Now put a lid on that. <coughs> Keep the flies. And have a peel away from it, yeah? Just rest that out, that'll do. Right, next pan. I'm gonna get this straight on the heat while we've got a good burn going. Straight on. A bit of oil. Just I don't know, a little bit of a pour. I can't you know I don't have a measuring jug. Well, uh, the facility of a wonderful film studio kitchen either. So we're just going to improvise, adapt and overcome. Right, while the oil's heating up and the quartz are mushroom, in half and then in half again. You've got quarters. Dead simple. All this sharp knife is good. This one's getting a bit old. You don't have to go and buy like an 80 pound chef knife, you know, just as long as it's sharp, as long as you can sharpen it. And some some knives you've got to get the special sharpener, oh, it's just a nightmare. So just a cheap one from the supermarket will do the, do the trick, the knife. Right, so the mushrooms are now quartered, the oil's now hot. So we're going to get the pork, the diced pork in straight away. Right, mushrooms, done. Let's get them back into their little pot. They're ready to go. It's always preparation, 75% of the dinner is preparation. 1% is cooking, the rest is eating. Anyway. Synthetics in the bin. There's the bin, sorted. Right, let's get the pork in the, in the oil. I always like if you add in a knife and just wave it around everywhere, you know, have a bit of common sense. Sausages. Diced pork's got in, sausages next. I'm going to use a whole packet because I don't have the luxury of a fridge. One string of sausages, in half, in half again. Makes cutting them a lot easier. Just cut there, separates the sausages, and then again, and again. And that's that. Right, well, just cut them roughly. Doesn't have to be a specific size, but all equal, so as cooking times the same. I'm not a lover of process, mate. But, uh, <laughs> when, when you're on the bread line, uh, you gotta make the most of what you got. Huh? Right, they're all in. Now we've got to get a nice colour on these. 
Don't want the meat undercooked. Got a nice colour on the on the skewers of these and on the dice pork. Right, so sausages in. can do veggie version of this, we'll be doing vegetarian dishes, you know, don't worry veggies not leaving you out. And I like to keep one of these multi-purpose cleaning sprays, kills 99% of germs. As long as it keeps my knife clean. Keep the blade, the sharp side away from you when you clean your knife. It's important. Thank you, little one. Put the sharp side of the blade away from you. There you are. One clean, shiny knife. Some people clean the board, I'll just turn it over. The wood's gonna go on the fire in the future, so. What the spray doesn't kill, the fire will. Right, I like them, give me a knife, just a little wipe. Getting that spray flavor off. And voila, it's done. I always chuck my dirty tissues in the fire. In the cloth there, we're ready. Oh, this stain. Oh, we're gonna add teaspoons off of salt. See what I mean? Brings the flavour up some ground black pepper. Just a few twists of black pepper. Depending on your pepper mill, this one's all right. But not the best. Give it a good stir. Right, bro. Quick time for a sweet on the old energy drink. No particular brand, just any one of them. Really. Got to keep the fire going. Do a bit of a poke around. Try and always draw your coals forward. Get maximum burn out of the wood. You don't want to be tipping out a box full of charcoal at the end of it means you haven't burnt your fire correctly. That should catch lovely. Huh. Once all the, the water is evaporated from within the meat, It'll start to burn, I mean uh, start to brown, not burn, there you go. It'll start to brown off and then get flavour, a bit of colour. All good. You don't have to use pork, you can use chicken, just the same technique. Um, prawns, like the other day I did a sweet and sour surf and turf, it was pork. Same ingredients, same technique but with king prawns as well. Absolutely wonderful. Sort of thing you could buy in like, I don't know, I don't know, like Thailand or something, street food. Just a bowl of that and some bread, enough. You don't need these meals that are 10,000 calories a go. I mean, what for? 
know, it's all that calorific value for money. Don't see the point of spending 20 pounds on something that's full of fat and sugar when you can do this. Cost of this. Uh, with 12 cans of energy drink, that's a pound each. With 26 pounds. Now I've got enough food here for me for today and tomorrow. So 14 pounds, seven pounds a day. That's a bargain. Firewood I found in an old skip. You know, I just got some wood out of this skip. It's been sunny for the last few days, so it's bone dry. Lovely. Bone's pretty easy, you don't have to. Well, normally I've got like some wood on the back here, like this, charring and drying out, but this is so dry, as you can see, burns straight away. Don't even need to add anything, just get a good fire going. That's it, then. Right, just waiting on this to sort of turn, change colour now. Um, what else can we say? Right, let's get the, pe the peppers prepped. Right, we got red, yellow, green. I'm going to use all of them. I'm going to use all of them because they give a really good flavour to sweet and sour. You know, they're a little bit sweet. Wonderful. Right, put that in the bin. Right, pepper. Take it, cut it in half. Dead simple. In half like that. So you left like that. And then all I do is cut a V like this, yeah? Not on the ball. So cut like that. The stalk pulls out straight away. Then you take out the pith, which is the white bit. Shake all the seeds out. Et voila. That's what you're looking for. Just cut it into three strips and then again. So two cuts one way, two cuts the other way. Dead simple. You don't have to finely chop this. You want this. I like my pepper quite chunky, juicy. So cooking time of pepper is not really that long. But we're going to prep it all now. So as we're ready for when we need it. Well, that's a good idea to have a sharp knife. Because... Believe it or not, pepper skin can be a bit sort of shiny, a bit tough sometimes. On your knife, you know they say the worst knife is a, the most dangerous knife is a blunt knife. Because you're not doing you're not doing the job properly, you know, with a blunt knife. Peppers in there. You know, dead simple, easy, easy, easy to prep a pepper. You know, like, it's up to you. You can do long strips. You, know, you can even muck around and cut it in circles if you like. Or diamond shape. I just don't see the point. Just why muck about? You know. I've not got any special people coming for dinner. And even if I did that, so what? What makes it sound special? Alright, so here we go. Right, all the pith, all the seeds are out. ready so we've got the mushrooms cut uh, cut we've got the peppers cut like these to give them better nature you know and now we might get a pepper tree growing over there that'd be nice wouldn't it That's send me a few quid right green beans again i just don't bother with these just take them out of the packet fine beans they're called i mean like it's just a handful isn't it you know so Split it into two piles. 
eventually I'm not even going to bother with that knife. But, yeah, I've had to do. It's just the top and the tail. Yeah. Shake them in your hand, get them all level. Just top and the tail. You haven't got to be precise. There's no, you know, it's just precision. Precision is something you like, get over time. Just cut them into little strips so long. Oh, the meat will be browning off nicely now, hopefully. Right, so just take the ends off. Give them a shake so the ends are level again. Put the other end. Oh, they've got a bit of a mangy one there. So, just in a little strip, that's it. Not like matchstick sort of size, but bigger. I don't know what it measures to. Right, so green beans prep, mushrooms, peppers, done. Meat's nearly there, I can smell the flavour of it. It's nice. Just gotta wait for all this juice basically to cook cook out of the uh, out of the meat. Right, we've got broccoli going in as well. Um, we'll prep that in a minute. Have a look at this fire, see how it's going. Get another piece on. Piece of wood like that be. That's fine. It's not like you burn your fingers, but you know, my hands are something NASA would be proud. They really are. After cooking for so many years, you just don't feel burnt. Any chef I tell you. Right, we've got the meat looking like that. There's a lot of juice in there still, but that'll evaporate. Another five, ten minutes, and that's gone. And then we're at the next stage. Always putting your synthetic rubbish in the bin. Always. When I say the bin, I mean the recycling bin, you know? Bonjour! We've got French people there. Yeah, I don't think we're in France, are we? I think we're on the borders of Italy and Switzerland today, I think. Um, just starting to bring some Lincolnshire sausages from England. How about People like their sausage skins, but a bit chewy. So, if they do fall off, you don't want them. Oh, I'm just waiting for the, uh, the liquid to evaporate from the. Uh, diced pork and the sausage meat and then we're going to be adding uh, tomato puree just uh, give it a bit more sweeties sort of bitter sort of taste sweet so no, no, it is really um, and then apple juice because apple juice I find takes the that porky flavor out of pork and we're going to bring that down nice reduction um, and then we're going to add our other ingredients. They well up. Nearly there.
Loads of little bits of skin of sausage coming off now, you know. So I just, you know, pick them up, chuck them in the farm. Well, you can cook on one of these wood, wood burning stoves with this top section, the circle, bit taken off. But your pan's going to get really blackened. And I, I mean, wherever you put it, you're going to leave a big lump of char behind. And uh, I prefer to keep it all nice and neat and tidy by leaving the circular lid on. Gives a nice flat surface. The flames are not jumping out all over the place. Fire's under control. Let's get another bit of wood in there. Got all those embers at the bottom there. Really hot. I mean could probably do a blacksmith's job on one of these, I reckon. Making horseshoes and nails. But we're just making dinner, so it's good enough for me. Right, all these sausage skins are really start annoying me. I wish I'd take them off at the start. Really. Easy to just pick them out. I mean, if you're having friends, huh? Probably not a good idea to use your fingers, but. Ah, I'm only cooking for me. That really is skin off the sausage. I know it looks like bubble gum, but it's not. Once all this wood catches, that's going to blaze very really nice. It's going to get all those excess juice off, brown the meat off, and then the rest of the ingredients. Got a couple of minutes, you want to practice the ukulele or have a glass of wine? Why not? Juice no more or less evaporated. Come on, man, it's all good. All right, in fact, I'm going to get my mushrooms in now. So as they're nicely watered down, they've absorbed any of that excess juice. Time is of the essence. 
synthetic in the bin. If you've got a wooden spatula like I have, you don't want to be leaving that over the edge there in case any flames tickle up. In fact, I wouldn't do that with a metal one either. Chances are you're going to burn your hand. So. You know, there are, there are shows out there showing you that you can have a wood burning stove inside a tent. I mean, if you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure you've either got A, fire extinguisher, B, fire escape. If you're in the middle of nowhere, do you like one of these inside a tent? I mean, I would rather have it outside, to be honest. I wouldn't risk it. Like that is red up, you know? That on a plastic, even a canvas wax coated tent is gonna be detrimental to your health. Right, this is looking absolutely wonderful. Let me just give it a quick season. Table salt. Again, just like a teaspoons of ground black pepper, just a few twists. All right, I've got the old bit of carpet here it's just to put my stuff on. I mean. I haven't quite got the, you know, the solid chestnut bureau that I could just put here and have all my ingredients out, you know. No solid oak kitchen around here, you know. So, wood burning stove, wonderful backdrop, good quality food, and a chef. What more do you need? Right, okay. It's starting to smell very sort of cut. Right. You see that? That's what it looks like so far. Get up back. I'll get a good colour on that. Uh, next, oh, I'm gonna add, actually no, I'm gonna go with tomato puree first. Uh, it's just tomato puree, it's just, oh this one's got a kick of chilli in it as well. That's alright. It's just concentrated tomatoes and it's puree and it's put in a toothpaste tube. Comes with a nip, little nipple on the cap, gives the end a pop. Good old squirt of that in there. Well, it's probably about, about a third of a tube in one go. It's, it's quite intense flavour. But I'm going to fry it off with the meat. So. Oh, just off that pot, oh, a little bit of tomato puree. It really, that's got a kick of chili. You can add extra chili to your tomato puree. What do you? I don't know, these sweet and sour sauce don't really need it. I don't think so. 
It's all the rage, isn't it? A bit chilly. So. Right, where are we at? Frying all this off, get the flavours out of that tomato puree. looking like so far. I'll write the ingredients down and cooking techniques and all that and I'll, I'll add it to the description of the information. All the information will be on the title page or whatever. It'll be there, don't worry. So fire's burning, meat's cooking, tomato puree's in there, all good. Next step, apple juice. It's like 60 bit of car. I'm going to put about half of that in. Just enough juice to cover the meat. Just done. Lovely. Right, lid on. <laughs> Bring it to the boil and just let it wait, let it simmer down a bit. Right. I know I use all the broccoli. I cut the end of the stalk off. And then big florets. I'll cut that in half. Start, just slice, take it off, carry it off. Nice. So. You find a bit that's got a bit of a bruise or just cut it off. I'm going to put all this broccoli in because I'm a big fan of broccoli. I don't throw any of it away apart from the end of the stalk. That's the point, unless it's a bit brown in the middle. But even so, it's not going to kill him. thinking about lighting one of these fires on a campsite you you might want to speak to the staff first um, I can't see it being allowed but you never know but if you're in a nice part of the world venture out just be careful it? it's a fire No harm in throwing broccoli back to Mother Nature. Even though this is probably like factory produce broccoli or something. Right, stalks. Just pick off any dead leaves and that, you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this because there's a big brown vein running through it. No, I'll tell you what I can. Sometimes the stalks are a bit tough. If you find that, just cut the chunks a bit smaller. There you go, broccoli, done. All right, 
for sure our sauce is boiling by now. Let's add the other ingredients. Wow, look at that, that's cooking away loudly. Right. In goes the sweet and the uh, sweet corn. Ginger, garlic, pickled onion, onion. Get that in there. That pan's now ready to wash. Bonjour, s'il vous plaît. We do not have the luxury of a kitchen port. And they are a luxury, so treat them with respect. It's a hard job. Right, we're nearly there. I'm gonna finish mine with just some pasta. Now what I do with that, I just get it like this and just break it in a little strand. Like you'll find in a minestrone soup, it sucks up all the juices, thickens up the sauce, perfect. Green beans, they cook relatively quickly, but they're going in. Right. That is what they're looking at so far. Very hot handed. Right, so ingredients we've finished with, we've put away, tomato puree, apple juice, we'll season again with sugar if need be, and salt and pepper. Get a lid on that. I just don't want the juice evaporating because it's the juice that will help melt the vegetables down. Just leave it like that for two minutes, let some temperature come out of those vegetables. Clean the bowl. Uh, all washing up to one side. Uh, right, now it's uh, oh, swim, so I swim. I bought earlier. Right, just gotta wait for that wilt down a bit. Get it in the sauce. Right, the broccoli is starting to wilt down a little bit. So start to push it down into the sauce. Like so. I'll give it another season in a minute. Just wait for the broccoli to start to start to wilt down. Right, a bit more wood on the on the fire. Obviously, 
pull those embers towards the front. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is overdo it with a fire. You don't want to be sitting around until midnight waiting for it to burn out. So we we're just literally now we're waiting on the veg to cook. And uh, that's about it really. Try to keep everything clean and tidy as you go. Saves you having to deal with a big mess at the end. But you could say that for every every aspect in life. So you know, make a big mess and then clean it up bit by bit, do you? Just keep going, keep cleaning organized we've only got left out the ingredients that we need the firewood that's more than enough wood for what we've got left we've just got to cook the veg peppers going last check the seasoning add the pasta you can take it off the heat once you add the pasta because the pasta will cook just in the temperature of the uh, of the juices that are left in the pan All right, we're finished with the chopping board. Give that a spray. I don't want any bacteria flavored foods. So we're going to do that over here. Right, so on the knife, give that a good clean. Don't want that hanging around. I don't know what these French Italian police are like. Uh, could be a bit of a nightmare. No, they're not your best friend when the football's on, that's for sure. Right now, I haven't got the luxury of a leather smith nearby to make me a wonderful sheath for my knife. And I'm not traveling around with excess knives. It's just nothing but problems. So I'll keep it in. That suck. Out of sight, out of mind. Mostly. Right, so we're starting to clean down. We're getting there. This is my preparation board. I mean, who needs stainless steel 50,000 pound kitchens when you need a plank of wood? say I haven't got a chef de plongeur at my disposal so antibacterial spray there's been no major sort of contaminations have there so yeah everything clean nice and tidy organization you can be your best friend or your worst enemy in French, mise en place. To be prepared. All right, just like they teach you in the Scouts, always be prepared for anything. Anything above the worst case scenario is a bonus. So, always plan for the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario here is that I could get somebody come along and rob me food. With some of these. There's a lot of eagles flying about, so you've probably got a whiff of the food. <clears throat> now, I normally clean my utensils before I use them. But I'll give them the best I can once I'm finished, you know. Alright, 
so well the only mess that we've left so far is very very biodegradable brother nature will be proud right so plastic container done these ones were clean didn't use them Yeah, if you're cooking on these wood burning stoves, you don't want to be too heavy handed. I mean, this one's all right, it's quite sturdy. But there are a few cheap sort of versions out there. That, I mean, they look wonderful in the, on the website and that, but they're not. This has only got three legs, and it's never fallen over. Touch wood once. I've got two legs. Yeah, there you go. Over all the time. So we're nearly there. Let's wait for the broccoli to do like wilt down, add the peppers, put the tub of you know, sorry, 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 in later, and then give it a final season. Dub. enough sustenance in here for uh, you know you could feed uh, if everybody had like, you know, like a half a bag of half of a stuff and a big bowl of this I reckon we could feed five people maybe six from this it depends on you know obviously how big they are and how much they eat but we're almost there wonderful Okay, so then, this is how it looks, still needs to cook down a little bit, but at this stage, we're adding the peppers, um, this stuff that we bought earlier, I think we know, no, this, this one we made, Earlier, I'm sorry. We just put it in a jar on the lid. It's for convenience. Right, again, quick season. Oh, I can't remember how many teaspoons of salt. It's about five. Each one is maybe what well, five grams of salt. The salt, I want to keep it to a minimum, but bring out the flavour. Again, I'll add another. That's in total, like what, eight handfuls of sugar, I think. So, but it's all down to your own personal preference. Right, these ingredients, finish it, get them and put away. 